Is your small business growing? That's the question we address right here on the Grow Your Biz Show. It's where we interview strategic entrepreneurs who inform and inspire you on your solopreneur or small company journey. Thanks for joining us on this episode of the Grow Your Biz Show. Hello and welcome to the Grow Your Biz Show. This is episode number 89 and I am your host, Paul Madsen. And I'll, I'm also the founder of GrowMedia.com. GrowMedia.com helps grow your business by uniquely interviewing you and getting your story on social media and on television. With me today is Corey Spitzer, the co-founder of Score Vision. Corey, welcome to the show. Hi, thank you. Thanks for being here. Thank good, you. Good to see you, good to see you. We're gonna hear all about Corey's story right after we thank our sponsor. ActionCoachOmaha.com is the global leader in business coaching uh, for small businesses and businesses of all sizes. If you need to clarify your business and if you need to have some accountability in your business, contact Jim Barger at Action Coach Omaha. Corey, welcome back. Thank you. Glad, to, glad again you're here. So uh, we're going to just jump right into uh, two things with uh, with the Grow Your Biz show here. Uh, and Corey, tell us what business you are in. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I'm I uh, I like to think I'm in the business of making businesses, but uh, I like that. Wait, that, wait, <laughs> that's good. I like to think I'm in the business of making businesses. You know. That's good enough right there. Well, tell us what that means. <laughs> well, I love... I, there was a but, I know, but tell us what it means. Sure, sure. So classically trained as a software engineer, but, uh, you know, I like building companies. Uh, I haven't, I'm not the most experienced person building companies, but uh, I like all the aspects of, of marketing and sales and product and... The whole that's, mix. That's that's where I'm trying to get to. Well, uh, well, I think, and we're going to get into a little <laughs> bit of it. You you've already been there. You're being there, doing that, as they say. Uh, so I interrupted you. I said, "What business are you in?" And you say, "You like to think you're in the business of building businesses." Um, and then you're starting to say a little bit more about what what business you are in. Oh, sure. Yeah. Uh, and I like the answer because you're talking about the outcome, not just the nuts and bolts of what you're doing. Right. Right. Yeah. So. Um, so I, I have always been, I've been a software engineer for about 20 years now, and um, I'm actually in the process of starting the next company. Okay. Right now, uh, for the last four years, I've been focused on Score Vision, which is a company that installs jumbotrons in high schools and colleges, you know, the big 40-foot yeah. boards. Yeah. Um, and then we create the software to allow anybody to easily run productions, scoreboards, um, community do you, events. Do you do the, the construction side and the material side or is it just the software side? No, we're definitely a software company. Okay, that's what I thought. Uh, yeah. We just, we have an install team that hangs the jumbotrons, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, right, right. but our bread and butter is the software. Right, I thought that was the nuts and bolts behind it that yeah. nobody sees, right? Right. And interesting, and so now you, you were a co-founder there. Yes. And, and so you, you've seen it from, from day one. We'll get into some of those uh, behind the scenes stories a little bit. Yeah. But tell us what, what made Score Vision unique? What, you know, what what's differentiates Score Vision from all the competitors out there? Well, Score Vision um, is, has entered the scoreboard market. That's where we came from. And scoreboards, if you think about scoreboards, they're uh, made of metal, they're fixed digit, what we call fixed digit, you right. know, they look like old digital watches, right? Right. <laughs> um, yeah. And Guess they do. <laughs> it, it stayed that, it's been that way for decades, right? right? Um, and so we came at it, you know, newcomers to the market with a fresh vision. Uh, we started, it actually all started back in 2008. One of the co founders, Chad Bukowski, he, uh, he wanted to build an app for the brand new iPhone because they were just now in sure. 2008 allowing developers to write apps for the phone. And he was thinking, you know, what do I, what do I write? You know, I just need a, a little. I want project. to write something. I want right. to create something. He's a programmer by background, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. So his son was playing at Omaha Sports Academy. Um, uh, he was playing basketball, and 
Chad, he was having trouble seeing the scoreboard. It was, it was behind him. Oh, so okay. instead of craning his neck, he said, <laughs> well, I'm going to write a little app and I'm going to track the score and the fouls myself. So that was in 2008. And While he's sitting there? No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's when the idea hit, right? Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. So, uh, and that app actually did fairly well. Fast forward to 2014. Okay. 08 to 2014. Mm -hmm. Right. And I've been, uh, I had my own software company for a couple of years. It was called Riff Labs. And Chad was uh, a partner at uh, one of my clients. Okay. And we both were in services doing client work, which is fine. Um, but we Con had contract software development right. for somebody might be outside of the industry. Exactly. They, they're renting themselves out as, as developers, as programmers and, and, uh, serving the client that way. But, right. but you do, you didn't want to be in that world forever. Right. Right. Yeah. So instead of having someone, you know, pay us hourly to make an app or a website, we wanted to build something ourselves and and have that grow. And so, why is that? It's because there's only so many hours in the world, right? Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, if you could put out five apps or something and they each generate sure. some revenue, then that's, that's a little bit better. And, that, and I'm going to stop you just for a moment because that's a real uh, important thing for entrepreneurs. And that's our audience, Corey, is sure. entrepreneurs, people wanting to start, people wanting to grow to the next level. I think, you know, entrepreneurs too often uh, say, oh, I'm going to I'm going to sell my service, and and that's fine. And it's like I said. Well, the problem is, there's, you know, how many hours do you want to work in a year? You want to work two thousand? You want to work twenty five hundred? Right. I mean, I've had a lawyer friend who's worked twenty two hundred hours a year, and you know, and it's it's a lot. And there's only so much time you either want to or can give to that scenario. And so entrepreneurs, I want you to remember and that we all need to remember this. How do I scale myself? How do I build out myself, Corey? Right. And so right. you're at that point, and uh, you got into the idea of let's do something scalable. Right. Exactly. I'll let you pick up the story from there. And <laughs> and uh, the difference in technology between 2008 and 2014. Yeah. I mean, that's <laughs> immense. That's six years, right? So, um, what 2014 looked like uh, was you could at that time write an app on an iPad hook it up with a cable to a TV, yeah. and you could have the buttons for scorekeeping on the iPad, Okay. but lots of flashy animation like a, a, a multimedia scoreboard ah. on the TV. Okay. So that's where we started. We I, came, you know. Uh, with the cable. <laughs> right. Chad said, um, hey, why don't we bring back this scoreboard idea? Ah. And we. Uh, so he hadn't really done anything much with that app since the time he wrote it to 2014. It was redesigned once or twice, yeah, but not but really. Not, not really pushed. Oh, you said it did do well, though, on, it, on an app store. Right, yeah, I think. Just for um, personal use. Right, yeah. I, I think it 100,000 downloads over wow, okay. six years, something like that. Wow. Um, and, but, you know, we, we came together, and, and this was uh, David Sutter and, and Gordon Witten were in the mix as well. Um, and we said, hey, we can do this now. We can take this to the next level. Okay. And how far can we go with this? <laughs> what if we, instead of had one TV, we put four TVs together? Ah. And so we, we went that route. Um, and then, so we sold, we eventually sold to Omaha Sports Academy. So okay. they have uh, our scoreboards. Um, and then took a trip to China, switched to LED, which allowed us to ah. have the bigger, bigger boards. Okay. Added a lot more apps to make it, make everything simpler. We we totally blew up the capabilities that we install and deliver now. And that's pretty exciting stories. I mean, give, take us from from the time that the three or four of you were were sitting in a room saying, you know, we could do this, turn it into something, to the time you're going to China. How how long a period of time is this to to scale your your product and things like that. Well, so uh, from we we started getting really serious about this in 2014, um, uh -huh. and then I think the China trip was uh, I want to say it was 2016, okay. early 2016, okay. something like that. Right. Uh, and of course, in the meantime, we we raised investor money, uh, we hired you know tech support, sales team, uh, and, and we went all at it. You at at what point um, do you 2014, you're getting serious. 2016-ish, you're in China looking at more technology, better technology. At what point 
do you start actually getting some revenue? Did you get revenue before you got investor money or how did that all pan out? Right, so our first couple customers were right about time we were raising uh, okay. fundraising. That gives, so, uh, gives the investor a little confidence in. <laughs> right, right. And then... Um, Not so, just a cocktail napkin idea, right? <laughs> right, right. And then uh, 2015 was the, the year the, the business actually formed. Um, and we, we had two high schools uh, immediately. Right. Um, and then it's just been growing every year since then. And everybody who loves them sees... Uh, everybody who sees them loves them. Yeah. It's just... How do I get them? How do I pay for them? Yeah, How do I yeah. um, convince uh, my staff, right. uh, especially at public schools? Right, right. Uh, I imagine there's a lot of uh, donors and charitable drives and right, causes right. and foundations and all that kind of stuff. Uh, where, where around Omaha do you have, um, have these boards? Have these? Uh, we're at Scott Catholic High School. We're at UTAN High School, West Side. Uh, we're at all three Millard High Schools, all three Elkhorn High Schools, uh, Brownell Talbot. Were you at the, well, then you're at the, you're on the new Millard South one there? Uh, yes. I, that, that's the one I know the most because I drive by there all the time and see this big, huge board. I say, wow, that looks like a college size board for a high school. I, I imagine there was some fundraising and donors and things behind that. Right, and of course the boards pay for themselves right. because of sponsor revenue, but um, okay. our, our- Oh, that's a good point, yeah. Our elevator pitch is essentially bringing the big college or big arena experience down to high schools, right. and we get the kids involved. They get to create their own videos, raise ah. the sponsorships, oh, they awesome. learn skills. Oh, man. Yeah. That, that, that's, it's Husker vision, baby. It is, yes. That's <laughs> well, right. That's terrific. Well, tell us a little bit more about uh, some of the, the challenges along the way of, of, of from formation to early clients and to product development to um, getting the funding and investment. I mean, there's a lot of moving parts to growing a business, and that's what we're here to talk about, growing your history with growing a couple other businesses, like including ScoreVision, and um, we'll talk a little bit more about your your next ventures as well, and your that that itch you have as an entrepreneur. Yes. Uh, but uh, I mean, tell us about those early days. Um, you know, did you get any sleep? <laughs> <laughs> well, I have put in some long hours, which is why we couldn't do the show uh, last time you contacted. Yeah, yeah, me. yeah. There's those things. Yeah. Um, yeah, but it's been a ride. Um, I would say. Like with, with any business, you don't know what you don't know going right, in. Right, that's the problem, yeah. And the vision you have in year one is, is not what the company or the product is gonna look like in year two or year three. And you know, I used to say, um, Score Vision feels like a brand new company every three to six months. Wow. <laughs> because we're, we're, we're learning so fast and we're changing, we're pivoting. Um, like this, this huge switch from TVs to LED. I mean that that required a lot of thought and right. and uh, a little bit of gamble, right? Um, but it, it, you know it all works out because sure. when you have good people and you have good information, mm -hmm. um, you you can sure. do wonders. Well, yeah, in, in the early right, I agree. You know, and I really like that quote. You know, it's like a new company every three to six months. The <laughs> I can't say the one word that I've heard a speaker use. We, we used to call it a beep beep. Uh, <laughs> that, now the more polite term is, is we, we pivot. Yes. We pivot. So you pivoted like, you're in the sports business, you pivoted like a basketball player all the time in, in that business. Uh, tell us about the early years of getting customers, getting clients. What's that like? So, it, it, you know, it doesn't matter, in my opinion, my perspective, it doesn't matter if you're a one-year-old company or a 10 year old company. Sales, if you're, if you're based on sales, it's a grind. It's always going to be a grind. Um, you have marketing, which is going to make your reputation, reputation precede you. Um, we have, we're very lucky in that our customer service and our support is spot on. Mm -hmm. It is white glove and we take care of people and that has helped a long way. Um, also, it helps that our customers evangelize for us because ah. they're all, we're in a niche, essentially. Yeah. And in this niche, there's a community and the community talks. Right. And so right. we, do, we do good work and 
people well, hear about it. Like you said, it sells itself. I mean, I'm, if I go to a game, in, a high school game, let's say, and, and see a scoreboard over there, and I go, wow, <laughs> I want one. Yeah. <laughs> and now, now do you have competitors who, who can also sell them that scoreboard or that system? Right, yes. Uh, so so we have, there's some other people in the market, and uh, these are the people that, you know, are more the old school, okay. right? They okay. have the fixed digit scoreboards, and they're fine. I mean, we work with some of them. Okay. Um, but what we deliver, again, the differentiator is the software. We'll right, run right, right. on any LED, okay. essentially. But our software, which keeps delivering every year because we're always adding new things, we're always fielding feature requests. We have to, yeah, like have to stay ahead of it, right. Um, it, it does so much and it's very flexible and it makes things super easy. Yeah. You well, know, sometimes, you know, when you're running a tournament, you have 30 seconds to learn how to run the scoreboard mm -hmm. because right. you're just a parent wow. of one of the competitors. <laughs> you yeah. know? I mean, it has to be easy, it has to be operable. So again, going out, you, 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 it is a grind, sales marketing. I mean, were you part of any of those early sales efforts? When you're a co-founder, you have to wear a lot of hats. I mean, right. I, I, I talk to a lot of entrepreneurs. They're, they're subject matter experts. Maybe they're technical mm -hmm. or uh, as a uh, um, Taylor, um, who's been on the show says, uh, no, no, I'm sorry, I, uh, I got it confused. As a past guest has said on the show, um, he says, if you're, if you're a techie, hire a salesperson. If you're a salesperson, hire a techie. <laughs> now, were you both in the early days? Um, so, you know, having four uh, founders uh, yeah, oh yeah. helps a lot. Yeah. And, and, and our strengths complement each other. My strength has not traditionally been sales. I can run a good demo, but <laughs> right, uh, right, right. most of the sales I, I um, the other partners do. Sure, sure. Do you, do you tell how many, is it public information, how many installations you have out there or anything like that? Um, is it dozens I, or? Uh, oh, it's, it's well over, it, it's in the hundreds. Okay, wow. Wow. Yeah, and, and I don't know the exact. No, number. that's fine. That's not your. That's not your side of the house, right? Right, right. right. <laughs> but I can tell you, we are in California, to Florida, to New York, to wow. Bangkok. And so a lot of that's word of mouth. Is it more high schools than than colleges, or? Uh, I would say at this point there are more high schools, but okay. we are in a lot of colleges, um, especially junior colleges, small colleges, yeah. and of course, um, Mid America Center. Just across the oh, river. Sure. Okay. So, yeah. Lots of lots of good places. Uh, well, what's it like to when you, uh, again, we're here for entrepreneurs. What's it like when you say, we have to hire somebody, <laughs> <laughs> and who do we hire? How do we hire? What's what's that like? Well, it's 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 scary. I mean, uh, even going back to when I was running a company of just one. Yeah. Um, you know, I do everything. I write the code and and. Um, I've been writing code for 20 years to now have somebody else write some of it. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of uncomfortable, yeah. right? And you, you want to double check uh, everything. Um, and then, you know, on some areas where you're not as trained up, you just need to know enough to know when someone's doing a good job or someone's doing a poor okay, job. Okay, right. Well, I mean, were there ever, ever the days when you said, we need to hire five developers, but we don't have the money to do that? Or, I mean, how does all that work when you have our fast growth situation? Right. Um, so interviewing itself is a black art, but then, <laughs> <laughs> um, and I don't know anybody that, that gets it right 100% no, of the time, no. right? But you you just have to choose people carefully, and, and your, first, your first bunch um, is just like your first Few customers. It kind of defines Good point. the culture, it defines Good. the product. Absolutely. Good point. Um, and and so, you know, I, I think we've we've made it work. We at least in Score Vision, we started with a bunch of people that have worked together for oh, okay. uh, across companies for okay. 10, 20 years. Okay, that right? helps a lot. Yeah. Yeah. So and, and that that's kind of key in finding a partner too. Um, right. you know, there, there's the balance of you know, are you as dedicated to this as I am? Do you love this idea as much as I do? Do you Good have point. the same Good point. amount of money and time to put into this? But I think, um, I think equally important is 
you it, it helps a lot if you have worked with somebody in stressful situations on past projects. Right, that's a good point. Yeah, you know, I mean, because it's not your first fight. Right, <laughs> and you, you've seen when somebody's sad or angry or ecstatic and what energizes them right. and, and you know it's it's like a marriage uh, yeah or something uh, you, you sense that they're getting very frustrated because you have a little little bit of history with them maybe you've seen how they work in other stressful situations right and so then yeah well building that culture building that team helps to have sometimes it probably doesn't help to have a couple of people who know each other and want to go off on their own vent avenue does that ever happen uh, well, you know, the, there's that saying, the, the devil you know. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, I think, in my experience, that applies more to vendors. Okay. Because I know, okay, when, when they say this day, they're either going to over-deliver, they're going to be a little bit late, but they'll take care of me or, okay. you know. Interesting. Yeah, well, it, uh, it's a fine balance, I'm, I'm sure, to, um, to, get, to get that... that uh, that right, but as a cash flow situation, you had some investment money, you had some early customers, so you were able to fund the growth of the right. staff, and, and that that helps a lot. Yes, people yes. like to be paid. Right. Uh, if you, I, I'm I'm in love with a new television show on uh, on cable. It's I think on the Discovery Channel. It's called The Undercover Billionaire, and instead of an undercover boss, you know, who goes undercover in his or her own company, this undercover billionaire will uh, he's starting from. He's got his pickup, his cell phone, and a hundred dollars, and he wants to build a multi-million dollar business. Okay. And he's not using any of his name or his resources or anything. Slept in his truck for the first seven or eight nights, you know, in Erie, Pennsylvania. <laughs> <laughs> he got sick and everything. So anyway, the point is that uh, where was I going with that? Uh, just uh, there's oh, a mindset. Uh, well, yeah, there's a mindset. He's collecting. He knows he needs to bring in some talent uh, in the venture he's forming. And he's getting these people together, kind of on the lam. Uh, they they don't know, you know, they they know there's cameras in the background because mm -hmm. it's, it's documentary thing they're built. You know how they always cover it up. But he's talking about these people coming in and they're just not being paid because he doesn't have any money yet. And he's he's bootstrapping his way up in that with selling houses and cars and whatever. The point is that he's enthusiasm for this project this enthusiasm for building this company has gotten these volunteers together to do that and so they're they're buying into the culture yeah and so i mean even though you're paying your developers i'm sure early mm -hmm. on <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's a law isn't it <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> people um that that they still um are buying into a culture right yeah and, and you've created a how many employees roughly uh 45 ish okay yeah and and uh that's a Huge accomplishment in just so, many, so few years. It's four years or so. Right. Yeah, four years. Just you know, over. and that and most. What's the percentage of technology people versus operations and? Uh, I think it's uh, maybe twenty percent uh, developers and, and okay. technology people. We okay. have uh, a lot of installers and technical support and sales. Okay. Well, it's a great story, and there's a lot more to tell. Uh, I understand you have an itch that yes. uh, you, you you like creating new stuff. Yes. And so you're you're kind of uh, doing the side hustle thing a little bit now as well. Right. Yes. I so mean, what's behind? Why do that? I mean, look at he's a co-founder of a fast growth company. Why would he want to do something else? Answer I, that question for I, us. I I don't know. You know, <laughs> some, <laughs> some people are just wired to okay. build, and and you know, Score Vision's in a great place, and there's still a lot to, that we could build. Right. Uh, but sometimes you have to step back and say. Man, we did a really good job. We we have accomplished, you know, these metrics, and we have people that are, uh, you know, we have kids and students that are learning new skills, and um, we've delivered that wow factor, and we're at a really good place right now. Mm -hmm. um, the growth, the curve is the growth chart is stable and steady and going up on a right, regular yeah. basis. Right. Okay. And just me personally, I I feel like. Um, you know, there, there are some pros and cons to being a 45-person company. Right. And uh, I just, I, I want to start the next thing. Well, what is the next thing? What are you, what are you getting into? So we're, we're very, very early. Very early. And right. it's, it's pretty loose. Um, right now I'm chasing this idea of improving 
the software quality assurance process. So basically, if you have a mobile app or you're, you're a company that builds mobile apps, sure. um, right now the way you test it is you, you have somebody usually dedicated or, or sometimes other people jump in. They push all the buttons and they try to find out, you know, all the bugs. Mm -hmm. And okay. they, they push all the buttons and they say, well, that's not right. You need to fix that. Um, okay. And I think there's a process. Uh, I've been talking with some people in the community, and I think um, we can come at this in a unique way and, okay. and create a process where computers can do more of the work okay. uh, to ferret out issues okay. with an app that you're building for mobile phones. Okay. Well, that's uh, sounds like a, a quality pretty focused on quality assurance type things. Right. And so, uh, if I understand, you're looking for input, if would right. be a word, from the QA community? Yes. Okay. So tell me more about that. So with, with any idea, um, you want to have a lot of meetings. You want to get a lot of feedback. You want to share your idea with a lot of people, mentors, potential customers, uh, connectors. And so uh, I'm in that process right now. So I, I've, I've had... A, a few lunches uh, and a few meetings over the last few weeks, and I'm having one tomorrow okay. with a gentleman that I just met. Okay, great. Just got introduced to. And just getting your, the purpose of doing this, of you going out and getting feedback from people, is mm -hmm. just that you're you're out there to get what from them as you as you form your your concept. Right. So a long time ago, uh, a friend of mine told me that the way. Uh, to define a product, a brand new product, is you need to find some people that whose problem you're solving to agree that the problem you're solving is a problem for them. Right. It's painful enough that they'll spend money to solve it and that your solution is a solution for their problem and Perfect. not not another approach. I, th I think we're gonna wrap things up with that thought Say that again, because I think it's critically important for me if I want to start a company or I want to grow my company in the next level. Give, give us that last concept again, and we'll put your contact information on the screen so QA people everywhere can reach out to you and give you their right. input. Once again, that problem, that problem pitch. So uh, when you're building a business, you want to solve a problem generally, and you need to find the people that agree that the problem exists agree that the problem is painful enough to solve, that it's worth solving, and that your solution is a solution, and then it's a question of how much you're gonna pay for this. Perfect. Well said, well put. Corey Spitzer, entrepreneur, uh, guy with an itch that's gonna go find a lot of problems and solve <laughs> them out there. Uh, learn more uh, from him, he's on LinkedIn. You can reach out there as well. I'm Paul Madsen, host of the program. Please visit growmedia.com to learn what's going on with me, and we will see you next week. Until then, go on out there and grow something. <laughs>